Physicists, philosophers, theologians are all talking anthropic principle. You were one of the originators of propounding the theory. And it's in two forms. It's, there's a weak anthropic principle and a strong. Tell me about each. The weak anthropic principle is a self-selection principle. And what you're doing is you are understanding reality on the basis of realizing we humans are looking at reality only from our point of view. That is, only certain types of physical cosmoses, of physical cosmologies, will allow our particular type of life, Homo sapiens based on a water planet, um, based on a particular collection of atoms. Only in such a cosmos could we make the observations which we obviously are making. And what it is doing is telling us a lot of things about uh, the limitations of being a human being. We can imagine the universe is vastly different than we, in most of its aspects, in most of its locations, vastly different from that of the Earth. Um, but we make observations only from our perspective. And the strong anthropic principle, on the other hand, says that life plays a particular role in the cosmos that life had to come existence, had to come into existence, that the cosmos had no choice in bringing life into existence. We could not have a universe empty of life. Now, now these sound very different. The weak anthropic principle sounds almost trivial, but it's not. It says that we can only observe that which we are here to observe. We have to be here to make the observation, and that's obvious but there's power in it. The strong anthropic principle seems to take that vastly into a new category of, of implanting a teleology in the universe, uh, that the universe somehow knew that we were coming or that was of such that it forced life and sentient life to exist. Vastly different concept. I agree with this, and that's one of the reasons why the strong anthropic principle is far more controversial than the weak anthropic principle. The weak anthropic principle has now become accepted now that physicists are not turned off by its name. Brandon Carter, realizing this problem, said that he wished he had called it not the anthropic principle, but the selection principle, which is what it is. It's just realizing the limitations of your measuring instrument. In this case, the measuring instrument is a human being. The strong anthropic principle says that mankind, more generally intelligent life, has a real important role to play in reality. We are not a chance accident. We could not not be. <laughs> The universe has brought us into existence for a reason. We might not know what this reason is, but it will be made manifest eventually in universal history.